It's day two of Food Ingredients Europe 2023, and I'm here with Linda Lichtmus from Euromonitor. Linda is a research consultant at Euromonitor, and she is here to talk to us today about consumer insights. So, Linda, according to Euromonitor's Health and Nutrition Survey 2023, mental well-being is a top priority for consumers. What kind of products are consumers looking for that align with this priority? So consumers are increasingly looking for products that make them healthier, meaning products such as they're also turning to consumer health products like um, taking vitamins, for example. But at the same time, they're also looking for beverages that support their sleep, for example. So maybe coffee in the morning, but not having coffee in the evening anymore, but having functional drinks that support their sleep, for example. There have been some innovations in that space. Um, so that's one part of mental health and having a good sleep, actually. So consumers are increasingly aware of what functionalities, what kind of ingredients would support their health. So what are the key reasons that consumers have for adopting flexitarian, vegetarian or vegan diets? And how can the industry cater to these preferences? So the number one reason is actually it makes them feel healthier. They feel better. So on the one hand, you have the physical health that's becoming enhanced. At the same time, consumers also feel better and maybe also less guilty because especially vegan uh, diets are uh, usually because people also not only look at their health, but also at animal welfare, for example. So it's a quite an interplay between personal health, environmental health, but also animal welfare. So how can the companies translate the 64% of consumers concerned, uh, concerned about climate change into impactful product choices? I think it's quite a challenge for um, companies to yeah, communicate as well what they're actually doing. So I think some companies have become a bit reluctant to, uh, because there have been accusations of greenwashing. So companies are being a bit scared because of their brand reputation to step out and say, hey, we're actually doing something already. So because there's so much innovation happening already and there are so many um, companies here look, uh, talking about plant-based only. So I think they offer products that are inherently sustainable. Um, so companies have to communicate what they're already doing. In Euromonitor's Voice of the Industry survey, Brand reputation and image drove sustainability investments. Do you think these motivations align with consumer priorities? And if so, how? I think there's a bit of a tension because um, it does align with consumers that consumers actually expect a lot from companies, from regulators. So there's quite a lot. But I think there's also this tension because consumers might sometimes think, companies only care about their profit or their benefit or their products and their brand reputation, but they don't mean it. Especially the younger generation, they all talk about authenticity. Um, that's quite a buzzword as well. But at the same time, I think many consumers are actually seeking more transparency from companies. But of course, it would also help the brand's reputation if they are being more transparent. So I think that tension is only quite a miscommunication. Um, between companies and consumers, um, but at the same time, of course, consumers are looking for brands that are authentic. And so what challenges do consumers commonly face when making sustainable purchases and how can the industry strategically overcome them? I think number one at the moment is the price. Certainly for many consumers, um, cost of living crisis, I think I'm not telling anything new here. Um, today we've heard some examples of what some companies or retailers are even doing, making the price for plant-based products the same as for animal-derived products. So that helps consumers actually deciding for the taste, for the product, but not because they cannot afford it. Um, so I think price is the number one yeah, barrier for consumers. I think in general it's also taste. Um, that's something I think we often forget talking about some new technologies, innovation, but it always comes down to taste. I think if they overcome that challenge, um, consumers will go for taste and price, so the quality in the end. So Linda, considering regulatory changes to prevent greenwashing, how can companies transparently communicate sustainability efforts from a consumer standpoint? I think the main uh, medium for uh, companies to communicate to consumers is the packaging, for example. And consumers actually do have a lot of trust in labels being used on packaging. 
Um, of course, it's a bit problematic because packaging is becoming busier. Like there's a nutri score, there might be a vegan label, there's an ingredients list, and consumers want to make quick choices. Um, but I think picking the right label and picking a label consumers also trust in. Um, so having scientific and evidence-based research and having a label that's also um, clear to consumers what it means, um, I think that's quite a key to um, yeah, convey consumers that they have a sustainable product. So um, in your presentation earlier today, you talked about um, the increasing demand for natural products like fruit juice. So how can the industry navigate challenges related to harvest volatility aligning with consumer preferences for natural ingredients? I think that might be one of the biggest challenges actually because um, consumers want to have natural ingredients at the same time. Not everyone, as I mentioned in my presentation, can drink orange juice. That's just not sustainable. I think it's also about raising awareness that there are alternatives and local or regional alternatives as well. And also, I think educating consumers on um, yeah, removing some stereotypes and stigmas around GMO, for example. So not all new technology or innovation is bad. Um, but I think it's about the narrative in the end and what consumers believe, which I know is a tricky task. But um, yeah, I think it's something that can be managed in the end. But yeah, it will be difficult, I am sure. Also in your presentation, you talked about skimpflation. Can you talk more on what skimpflation is? and how companies can navigate challenges around issues like skimflation while ensuring customer satisfaction and trust. So skimflation is another term that came up after the pandemic. Um, just next to shrinkflation, skimflation means that many producers have changed ingredients to lesser value ingredients to save money, but also not only saving money, um, but some ingredients were just not available and too expensive. So they would have to rise, raise prices again in times where cost of living prices is actually being already a problem for consumers. So I think the most prevalent example is changing from sunflower oil as an ingredient to palm oil in many cases. Um, but yeah, of course, it's uh, quite difficult to earn back consumers' trust because um, I have shown an example where the nutri score also went down. So it became apparent to consumers that actually the ingredients changed and also the nutritional value changed as well. And I think it's also, again, about transparency and communicating openly why ingredients have been changed. Um, but maybe changing back ingredients if that would raise the nutri score again to earn back consumers' trust again because they might be wondering if prices are going down, I'm buying sunflower oil, why, why is it now more expensive, but not for me? So I think that's something consumers might maybe not be aware of simply, um, but um, companies should communicate with consumers in that case. Thank you, Linda. That was really interesting. And we all look forward to hearing more about Euromonitor's work on consumer insights. Thanks.